Welcome to another actual play with Just One More Fix. This is James. With me in this episode is Lacey, Carey, Holly, and Taffy. Hello. Hey. Hey. You can find us online at JustOneMoreFix.com or on Twitter at Just One More Fix. If you like us, you can support us at Patreon, and you can give us a rating and review at iTunes or wherever you find us at. In this episode, we're going to keep playing Night Witches. And now, it's time to get our gaming fix. You're about to listen to another episode of our Night Witch's Actual Play. These episodes contain some mature content, including themes of war, so you've been warned. This episode also comes from our session number seven, where we recovered the audio, so you may notice some changes in the audio quality and a few glitches. We rejoin our Russian airwomen as Galia has encountered Mikhail in the forest uh, during their expedition to see if there was a traitor in their mix. So without any further ado, here is Night Witches. Go ahead and roll plus medals as your anger and training kick in as you draw your pistol from your holster and without batting an eye. Yeah. You know, like it's not it's not even a like it's not even a a question. It's like literally as soon as I see his face and make the realization, the pistol's in my hand before I before my brain right registers on. that it's him. You picture our plane going down and the grandma bleeding on the ground as you <gasps> pull your pistol. No! Yes, because I have to see her. <laughs> it's your fault. You took their grandmother indirectly. <laughs> All right, so what'd you get? I got an eight. An eight? All right, so so you can choose uh, one or you can t- spend from the mission pool. And I guess we can kind of figure out how what it's going to look like for off the act up chart. Because I'm not sure that this is entirely right for what's happening here so um make a suggestion <laughs> yeah so i'm gonna ensure that there are no consequences for acting up i'm gonna oh, I don't, okay so i don't there's okay you're wait. catching a traitor okay he's not a decorated uh officer i don't think that there's gonna be any there wouldn't be consequences for this action anyway so i don't think that one really would apply do you know okay. what i'm saying i think you should get to choose whether he lives or dies from this bullet wound girl he's definitely gonna live because i'm gonna it's gonna be bad. I want it to be bad. So you want to choose I'm that so he lives? Angry. You shoot yeah. him, but like, he lives. I'm wounding him. I'm not. I'm not killing him. Like in that moment where I want to kill him, I realize that if I do, then I could be lying. Like oh. they could implement me, and the only one that knows about him are them, and they could think I'm a traitor too. Okay. Because of that. Okay. So you. Sh- you. Yeah. He's. <sighs> I think there's this moment where. He's walking through, right? And then you have this realization and you're super mad. And maybe in that moment you gasp or make some noise. So he turns towards the noise and he sees that it's me. That it's you. And he sees me shoot him. Right. And then oh, I want him and to then in it. that moment, you know, he's looking down literally down the barrel of the gun. <laughs> and then there's the barrel flash. Bang, bang, bang. As you you shoot him up, right? Well, you I'm know? not shooting him once. Well, uh, I, well. I'm, I'm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that I'm willing to concede the fact because of, be, that you can choose that okay. he doesn't die, okay, right? But I think in the that. in the the amount of visceral anger that you displayed earlier, I think you're That's just true. you're you're shooting yeah. at least three times yeah. before you're like, okay, wait, hang on. Where's a good right. place, medical people? Where's a good place? Right across the leg. Right across the leg. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> you shoot him, and he goes down. Obviously, because you shot him, right? As people do when they get shot <laughs> by bullets. And he is laying... So you guys are having this negotiation on the road. And then you hear... As it <laughs> ends, you hear... Pop, pop, pop. Right? Galia, she's by herself. So yeah, you guys... So obviously, you think I'm getting shot. You guys haul ass, right? And so he yeah. will fall to the ground, I'm right? I'm going to... Is he reaching for a gun? Uh, no. Okay. He, he hits the ground and he's doing that. I've been shot to crap, <laughs> you know, thing where you're like, Ugh! you know, he's in pain and agony Are and, you- and you know that you shot him. And really at this point, it's sort of your decision, whether he lives or dies. If you don't do anything for him, he will definitely bleed out here and die. But his wounds are such that if you go to him and apply pressure and do some kind of combat medicine that he will live. So it's, it's totally your decision. <laughs> All right. Turn it I'm sorry. I might Stop be the most there. evil game master in the entire world right now. <laughs> so I will I will go and I will put pressure and and rip off some of his clothes, not mine. Right. Make tourniquets around the the bullet 
wounds, and then I will, like, straddle him and, like, punch him in the face. Okay. <laughs> right. How could you? You've betrayed us! Like, I'm so angry. Right. Okay, so, um, you guys are running. Now you hear shouting. <laughs> right? But you hear Gallia shouting. So you're like, you're not sure what she's saying, but she's shouting. Okay. And she is... I'm gonna grab Gallia. She is fucking... Shoulder, fucking like, stop, 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 stop. She is stop, fucking stop, mad, him. right? So you, you're you you're there on top of him. You've applied the pressure to his wounds. He's looking up at you, and he's sort of like in this in and out mode where, you know, he's like, you shot me. <laughs> you know, like, you shot me. I'm gonna look down and like... So, you, so you guys, you guys, oh, you guys aren't there yet. Deal. So you guys are still on, on your way through the woods. Okay, and and you're, you're there on, like, he's basically sort of at your mercy and you have his wounds contained in a way that he will survive to make it back to the camp. But he's laying there and you see that he has this honest shock on his face. Like he says, you shot me. I I have tears like right, right, right. right. As well. Like, I mean, I, I mean, I, I confess that I loved this guy. Right. Like truly. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And he, he's not struggling, you know what I mean? You know, but he definitely doesn't want to punch in the face anymore, you know, and he's shot. So I think he's like trying to like grab your, your wrist to your forearm. Yeah. So you, you'll stop punching him yeah. because that's miserable. And I think that he's laying there and you, um, like he's looking at you in this way that like you can, like, you know, when you look at a person looks at you and you can see he, he's definitely had, like, he doesn't feel like he feels, he has feelings for you and he can't, he's like sort of in dismay that you shot him and he just looks at you and he's like, they'll kill me. Tell me, tell them that I followed you out here. And then he like, he, you see his slowly fades from consciousness. Come back. No. 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 At this point. <laughs> So I think at this moment... <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No, I th- literally, so like, he, as he passes right, out, so, like, no. Okay, so he passes out. I think you sort of, like, slide off of him. Like, you're at his side now, yeah. like, in shock and disbelief. Yes. And that's when the group... You hear all these people storming through the woods like a herd of elephants. Yes. You know, and they arrive, and you see her, like, sort of, like, on her hips, like, sitting kind of sideways beside him, beside Mikhail, and he's, you can see he's been shot, and he's been tended to, and he's, he's been, you know, wounded, and she's just sort of, like, shaking her head in disbelief, you know, saying, like, shit, did. No. 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 With tears. Stop. <laughs> so, what do you, what do you guys do? Um, so, I'll say, uh, Sergeant Valentina, Junior Lieutenant Masha, Lieutenant Dasha. Take this man to the medical tent. Okay, so we'll grab him <laughs> roughly by whatever clothing we can grab. And, and then um, Galia, Nina, who else is left? I think that's it. Uh, Galia, or Nina, take Galia back to the barracks. Uh, I'm going to go see Captain Barsakova. Okay, so Valentina will go with, with you guys and everybody. Yeah, I imagine. No, every- Valentina is helping Masha and Dasha. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we're just Mikhail roughly to the, grabbing him right, by whatever medic we can grab. And- right. Do not leave his presence. All right, so everybody, I assume, snaps to and does what's yes. been asked. Yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. I will go see Captain Barsakova. Okay, so you guys will head back, uh, and you are going to Barsakova. Mm-hmm. Are you taking anyone with you, or are you taking... No. Okay, no, so okay. where are you telling... I am telling Nina to take her back to the barracks. Okay, so you guys will arrive, and Nina is about the least assertive person in the world, next to Valentina, maybe. And she says... So you're supposed to come back to the barracks with me? That would be... We should do that. Question mark. <laughs> I'll just start walking. Like, I'm just... Okay. I'm in such shock. And so she'll put her arm in your arm. Disbelief. And, like, you know, she has... She puts her hand on top of yours. And um, as you feel her hand on top of yours, you look down and you realize that your hands are, in fact, covered with Mikhail's blood. And it's on your pants and stuff. It's on everything. Yeah. And she, she actually walks you to... Um, the showers or whatever, or whatever kind of accommodations you guys have. And she takes you in there and she washes your hands and cleans you up as best as she can and uh, takes you back to your guys' tent. I'm just going to sit there. I am in such shock and disbelief that I can't. Right. I just can't today. Okay, so back at the ranch, Vera, you and Seta. <laughs> are you capable of carrying on? Carry, I know. Carrie, are you capable of carrying on? I'm good. 
Oh, good. God. I got the tears out. I'm good. <laughs> okay. To make it worse, now I'm, I'm, I'm impregnated with a traitor baby. <laughs> you better stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Don't give him any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to make a quick later. note here. Don't mind me while I make some quick notes. <laughs> Oh, oh, you didn't roll the d30 you're safe <laughs> <laughs> okay so you guys um, Sveta, Oksana and Vera you guys will follow back these two townsfolk to their they go back to um, actually go back to the bakery because the this baker owns the bakery right and you see them slip inside there, and there are, like, you know, a lantern turns up a little bit, you know, in one of the rooms, and you can see them, uh, see through the window, you know, them going about something, and maybe they're at a table, like, writing something down or something, do you know what I mean, you know? And, uh, so I think they write some, you see them, they don't seem rushed, but they seem like they're moving with a purpose, right? And you see them write things down, uh, they're at a table, you know, with some papers and stuff like that, whatever. <clears throat> and uh, at this point, you guys are in town, but I think, like, do you think there will be, like, an alleyway or something to hide behind? Is the tavern still so open? Yeah, it's not, like, super late yet. The sun has gone down, but it's not terribly late yet. Then I think there would probably be, like, a like a decent alleyway between either the grocery, next to the grocery store or the alley that we could, like, if okay. we are next to the, the tavern... It would probably be a little inconspicuous. You tend to see people in the alleyway mm-hmm. of taverns. And I think the grocery store also has an alleyway, but it would be more conspicuous. Okay. So I think, uh, I think like you're sort of entering into Sveta's political police world, right? So she walks you guys over to this little alleyway and she sort of stages you guys in a way that where it doesn't, you know, like you can be seen, but it, it it doesn't seem out of the ordinary. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, she see her, maybe she snatches up a half uh, empty bottle of, of beer and she puts it in your hand and tells you to sit here and lean against the wall. It's so, like you guys are sort of like, you know, more or less sort of out of the way, sort of, you know, like hidden or whatever. Um, you will see that they, they go to writing something on the counter in the bakery, like the sales counter, and they uh, write things out on something and you see them like, uh, roll it up or whatever, and then it looks like they're putting whatever they've written on into, like, some kind of small tube or something, right? And they've made multiple notes, and they put them into these tubes or whatever, but they're small, so it's hard to keep track of because you're looking through a window across a road, right? But you can kind of have an idea of what they're doing. And then you see they both, it takes about 45 minutes, maybe, and then they sit there, they talk to one another, they maybe, I think they pour each other like a, a large, you know, shot of vodka, maybe, you know, throw back a, a shot of some, some strong liquor to steal their nerves. And then they quickly walk out of the bakery, but they are walking in two different directions. Who has the tubes? Um, there were multiple of them and you're not entirely certain. Uh, can I eyeball to see like if you have like a slightly bulging pocket? You can, you can. You can absolutely add all the situation. So here's but here's what I'm going for is I don't I want to make this about your character and not Sveta. Does it make sense? I want you to make the rolls and not Sveta making them. Does it make sense? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so go ahead and make an eyeball for me as you eyeball the situation. And eight. So hold one. So the questions are what am I ever looking? How could I get it? so I want to know how I could get the information on which one is carrying those tubes or which one am I overlooking that has them. Um, Are they splitting them evenly? Do they leave them in um, the bakery to bake in the food? Oh, God, that would be terribly wicked. (laughs) uh, Which loaf do you want? I will take the German schnitzel loaf. (laughs) Ah, here you go, sir. (laughs) Chew wisely. I'm also going to have a big smile on my face while I'm looking at them. Kind of like I'm checking them out and I'm like leaning back in the alley. In case they look this way, I'm going to look like a drunk lush. Yeah. And not like... Somebody that's spying on them just kind of like, like, I'll say something to, to her. We should have went home earlier. Right. Okay, so. Just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think, let me ask you this. What do you think is the more likely situation? That one of them has the the, the information and the other one is a diversion? Or do you think both of them have it, the information? 
Honestly, I thought, and here's why like, I was surprised they were up now on tubes. I thought the extra equipment she saw on the mechanics was uh, radio equipment. Oh, okay. And that he was radioing those coordinates. So the fact that they even wrote them on notes is alarming to me. Well, you do know that radio transmission can be intercepted. So, unless it's like direct wire to wire. If it's if it's broadcast and anybody can that has the right frequency can hear it. So then, because the mechanic has been at work and the baker has not, I think the baker has them. Okay. That's what, like, that's my personal. That, that seems reasonable to me. No, I, I'm kind of going, like, whatever, you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have so any So maybe the tools he had were the tools to make these little, like, okay. tubes mm-hmm. or... Okay. So, yeah, you see the... the well, in fact, it makes it maybe it, like you realize the younger mechanic he doesn't get around so good. While the baker, he's older and he's a little overweight, but he still gets around just fine. You know, he could he's not gonna run a marathon, but he can still get up and run and you know and get around uh, relatively well, right? So you see that they both go two separate ways, and they have this kind of look to them like they they're trying to not be disturbed or noticed or followed. They have that sort of. You know, the Pink Panther moves that goes on when they go walking by, right? <laughs> and mm-hmm. you, uh, so you're going to give, you're going to follow the, uh, the beggar? It totally goes against what said I wanted. She wanted me to schmooze this younger dude. Right. Well, she, the, well, the, the situation changes, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. The idea was that maybe you guys might go in and schmooze with him. But, uh, so she sees them split up and, uh. So she looks at you, and she's dealt with you since, well, ever, right? Mm-hmm. Since the training days, right? Yeah. And she looks at you and looks at Oksana, and she says, can this lady handle herself? And she says, you're sure? Go with her. Huh? I, so I want her to go with Oksana. Okay. Because I think, like, I can handle myself better than Oksana, but out of all the people that, like, are in our group, I think Oksana is probably the best at taking care of herself. Okay. So out of everybody, she is the best. But I think that I am better. Okay. Right, right. Yeah, she can handle herself. I can do it better. She tells Oksana to follow. She says, you follow the uh, the mechanic. Vera, you follow the baker. I'm going to make contact with the with the people I have here in the city to... Uh, we, need, we need more resources than the three of us. We may be running into, like, a German patrol. Okay. I'm going to... Sc- squeeze their hands is kind of like uh we got this like okay. not like an over like we're not in trouble but we are strong right like, and then i'm gonna so gonna i think what you said follow. about oksana is totally right she may not be quite the level of badass night which is that you guys are but she's been around the block and she's been the one that has survived through all this fuck disaster right she's my devil so like, like she, she's like you you squeeze her hand to reassure her and she says, she looks at you and she says, this isn't a plane, but I can do this. And then she, you know, nice. she turns and, you know, walks off with a purpose like she's going to, you know, take care of business or whatever. So Sveta will tell you guys, tell the two of you, there's only two roads in and out of this town. One that comes in from the west and one that goes out to the airfield. So we know they're not coming from the airfield to gather information. They're coming from outside of town. So she says, uh, follow your people if they make a drop note where the drop is and then we need to meet like at the edge of town where that road comes into town to see who's coming in do you know what i'm saying you know doesn't make sense she's or wait hang on so she says we got getting jumbled up here she says she says sit with the drop wherever they make it if no one comes to pick it up by sunrise you come to the edge of town and which that is where i will be waiting on whoever is going to come into town does it make sense Okay, so like one, two, three, team break, go, and uh, <clears throat> you guys break off, and the baker does some dodgy stuff through town, down some alleys and whatever, and you're reasonably certain that if you weren't a local, you you, you know it would have probably lost someone. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, but because he's an older guy, you can hear him breathing a little heavy. Uh, you're in shape, you know that kind of thing. I've been to town twice. Now. Right, right, right. So you're able to. To keep up with him, at least, you know. Um, I think there may be a couple close calls or something, but I think you're able to keep up with him. I'm never going to let go of the beer bottle. Okay. And I'm always going to prepare to squat down and take a piss. Okay. If it looks like he's getting too close, I'm just going to take a piss. Okay. Very good. So it looks like I'm just drunk and running around town. 
very good. Girls, nice. I forgot. Me. Have you? Mm-hmm. Um, before we go any further, there haven't been any instances of you in town being like. Cause I think there were some couple times in Trugbornyaka where you had gotten drunk and had some fun and stuff like that. But that hasn't happened here in Patch the Sky, right? The only time that I got, I had one drink when we were like schmoozing locals, and then I had. A couple of drinks when we played the piano. Okay. But he, so, she was up and in uniform for that, too. Right, right, right. So, because I know in Trugornyaka, there might, like, people probably had seen you be a little bit of a party person. Right. But you not know, here. Right, not Okay. Okay. Because that might shade a person's reaction to you, given depending on the situation. So. Oh, I guess we were in town playing the piano the other night. Yes. But she so wasn't visibly drunk. I don't think there was. Like, not I here. chugged a beer, but I not was here. not visibly yeah. drunk. Well, because no. Vera, Vera hadn't been here that long either, right, though. So. Right. All right. So, he will. It, it's about 15, 20 minutes of, of a fast-paced walk of him, you know, trying to... At a certain point, you can tell that he thinks he's lost any tales that he has had. So I think at this point, when it's more like walking down a road, there's some question for whether he might notice you because he is actively going to watch. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I guess I could go either way. I could go tempt fate. Obviously, that's the, kind of like the catch-all. Or I could go act up because this is, as a Soviet air woman, because it's like you're on a... You're on a mission from Stalin, not from Gad, from I Stalin. Mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, that's, that's my Chicago Russian. Oh, We're on a mission from like, Stalin. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's not like a flight mission, but it's still at night. I feel like a wayfinding role would be appropriate. No, well, I'm not saying that she can't find him. I'm saying this is to see if he notices her or not. Um, yeah, but that's kind of mm, okay. So I'm acting like a natural born Soviet there with my following this guy, right? I think so. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Or do you think it would be a different act up? No, I'm okay with that one. I I think could... It, it could change as the situ- as the scene progresses, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I think okay. Eleven. Very good. <laughs> so you like every time he, he turns, you slip behind a corner or whatever. Right? and you are just you are one with the shadows. Baba well, Yaga is on your side this time, right? I am into this. Right. I told myself, after all this stuff that I've been through, I'm going to be either become NKBD or, you know, I'm just going to live my life as a natural born Soviet air woman. And right. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to stop with all the shenanigans. But I'm going to win. You can't beat me. Not today. Right. So he will make it all the way to where his drop spot is, we'll say. Okay. You're able. You know what? I think you arrive at this place you haven't been to in town before. It's actually this old World War One tank that is in an open area, like a park. <laughs> and you see him walk up to this tank. That's where the kids are playing. Mm-hmm. And it's a lonely, dark area. You see a circle in the dirt. <laughs> and uh, the moonlight is sh- So it lights it up relatively well, right? It's an open area. I'm not going in. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where you can see, and like you can tell, it's a, it's very clearly become sort of like a playground or a kid hangout of some kind. There's some swings maybe and that kind of stuff, and then this large tank that's all rusty and it's it's um, disarmed or however you want to say that. It's like a, 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 the coolest jungle gym in the world, basically mm-hmm. at this point, right? It's a real tank <laughs> that you can actually climb in, but it's not going to do anything. And you see, he walks up. And he stands there, and he lights a cigarette, and he's standing next to the tank smoking. And I think that uh, you're there watching him, like, you know, focused, right? And you see that he slides. It's a small, like, I don't know, like, maybe copperish tube, about a half inch around and about maybe two inches long. And he slides it in between uh two of the tank treads, like, under on the bottom side of them. So it's out of sight. Like, you'd have to know it was there to look for it, right? And he stands there, and he finishes puffing on his cigarette, and uh, throws a cigarette down, puts it out, takes a swig off of a flask he has, and then goes walking off. So do you stay with him, or do you stay with the drop? How many tubes did they stuff? I'll say two. I think it makes, like, one for him and one for the other other guy. It doesn't make um, sense they have it like it. Probably the only tube that he's dropped. Right. She told me to stay with the tube. Okay. I'm going to stay here. He's got a family and kids. Yeah, he's. I can't he's a, imagine he's, he's a local. Go that right. far, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tuck myself away as well as I can, and I would like to be within earshot because okay. if anybody that is a German speaker that comes, mm-hmm. I know that I can. Oh yeah, you speak German, right? Right, yeah, right, right. So I would like to stay within earshot of this <clears throat> drop location. So you sit and you're watching this drop, waiting, and 
So you're going to see Barsukova. Yulia, you're going to see Barsukova. Mm -hmm. Galia, you've been cleaned up and you're sort of uh, like laying on your cot. You know, I'm I'm just sitting there, just uh, looking at the like the doorway, just waiting. Okay. For somebody to come in and tell me what in the hell is going on. And Dasha, what are you doing? We what are at the medical. Oh yes, yeah, so you took him to the medical. Walked and... in very roughly, carrying this bleeding man, and I call out for Natasha and Victor. I'm assuming. Yeah, so they're they're there, and they're like, "What? It's awful! Oh shit!" Don't they... ask questions right now. Just keep him alive. Yeah, they say so they bring a gurney over and they put him on it, and they. Well, they don't ask questions because this is, they know him obviously right. from this base. So they just go, they roll him back. Don't um, ask why we brought him here. Nata just keep, keep Natasha him goes, he <laughs> goes to get the doctor and Victor yeah. goes to doing his thing. And they sort of roll him out of the doorway and into a, like one of the operating rooms and go about doing their business and stuff. And my commander told me to not lose sight of him. So I'm going to sit outside the operating room doorway. Okay. Okay. So they like, look a little like they don't stop what they're doing or anything but they take note of you kind of like what the deuce and there's like this whole circle of you air women <laughs> that are sort of there because because she yeah. said none of you take your eyes off of right. this dude right and so everybody is there like and um i don't think that while the romance between uh gallia and mikhail was a secret among the larger group, I don't think it was a terribly big secret among your guys' section. Is that fair to say? That, that is fair to say. So there's a lot of kind of like... Oh, my God. Yeah, those moments between everybody, like, oh, you know, have yeah. you seen her? Like, how, you know, like this kind of, you know, moment going on. Mm -hmm. All right, so you have eyes on, on Mikhail. So, Yulia, you walk into the command tent, mm -hmm. I assume, and you will see... Captain uh, Barsakova is there. Uh, Senior Lieutenant Petrova, the logistics officers officer is there, and Bereshinskaya, Major Bereshinskaya, right? She, yes. the the regimental commander, is there, mm -hmm. and they are going over uh, requisition forms for supplies and parts for the planes and that kind of stuff. And they see you walk in, and they're like, uh, "Senior Lieutenant, turn and look at the captain." Uh, I have. Intel of immediate importance. So Lobodeva and Bereshinskaya are like, they have this like, conf not super confused, but like, you're a pilot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look on their face. And Barsakova will just stand up quietly and say, excuse me. And she uh, walks around the thing the, the where the, the desks are working at, puts her mm -hmm. hand sort of like gently on your shoulder and walks outside with you and over to another area okay. and says, um, what do you have for me? Um, Captain, I, I will be happy to give a full report later, but lives are in the balance as we speak. Uh, we found an area that looked prime for ambush and found some boot tracks there. We went back this evening to investigate further. We found uh, a military officer from our own camp, a Mikhail, I believe he works in the cook office. Uh, he was shot by one of our women. He is in the medical tent. He was giving information to people in the town. I sent senior Your lieutenant... Eyebrows were raised. Yeah, I sent uh, senior lieutenant uh, Speta along with uh, junior lieutenant Vera and junior lieutenant Oksana to follow the two individuals into town, and that is where they are. Um, presumably gathering farther intel. I don't have a report from them yet. Uh, I... I Wait farther direction with what to do with this traitor. He is being guarded in the medical tent by my women. Do you, do you wish for me to bring him here? So she just grabs you by like the the like shoulder part of your uniform mm -hmm. and begins walking away, like pulling you along with her. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like sort of like in this like this oh shit moment, right? Mm -hmm. And goes into the command tent where Lobo Deva and mm -hmm. Bereson Skyo were. And she ruffles through some stuff where her her where uh, Bersh and Sky stuff is, and she gets out like an official report form or whatever, mm -hmm. and she slaps it on the table and slaps a pencil down and kicks a chair over like out and mm -hmm. says, "Put it on paper." Where is he at? He is in the medical tent. You're sure. You're sure. A hundred percent, Captain. Three other of our members are in town right now. Do do we need to go assist them? She says, I will, uh, she, she says reassuredly that if they are with Sveta, she knows what she's doing. 
I will arrange things to send more help into town, but this is not a job. Um, well, this is, this is a job for the political truck and the infantry. And, and, she, and like the military police, whatever their version. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, this is a job for the political truck. I and- wholeheartedly agree. I trust Vera with my very life. And I, I, I that is why I sent her with Lieutenant Sveta. She will do what needs to be done, as will Oksana. She says, I have no doubts. Um, you are exceptional <clears throat> Russian women. She says, time is of the essence, I imagine. I will leave you to it. And she pats you, you know, like she claps you on the shoulder, you know, in that, you know, good job well done kind of way. Yeah, she just says, uh, good job, senior lieutenant. Good job. My faith was well placed. Thank you for not letting me down. And she walks out the door with the purpose. And uh, you guys are in the infirmary, and you can sort of hear the airfield sort of stir and come to life. Not like planes are taking off, but there's trucks that are starting up and there's men that like people are moving around and that kind of stuff. And like, there's six or seven of you there that are watching him. Right. So you, like I imagine someone eventually goes to the door to see what's going on. You don't all have to have eyes on it <laughs> like the entire yeah. time. And you will see that there are two large trucks, you know, that are used to sort of haul men back and forth that uh, you see infantrymen load up into the back of and they, you know, they, go to the gate and then out the gate presumably down the road Vera back in town you are there waiting and waiting and waiting and And realizing while I'm waiting that whoever it was might not have had all the information so they're working with other people on our base (laughs) but anyway waiting so you're sitting there waiting and you will see uh, go ahead and roll me an eyeball actually I think this seems appropriate for an eyeball as we move into a different style of this phase here I'm going to take one from this and pull for a seven. All right. So hold one. So you're sitting here watching this, and it's a pretty quiet scene, and you've been here for a while, and this guy leaves, and it's dark, and it's late. So um, and if you need to see the list from the MASH book again, I think we're kind of in between Night Witches and what that does. So um, I'm going to just use a question off of here. Okay. What am I overlooking? What am I missing? Is somebody is is it a child <coughs> that's going to come and take this? Is this a playground? Is that why it's here, or is it? So I think what are you overlooking? I think. So I think you like what you're overlooking actually gets exposed to you right in that moment, right? So this is an era where everybody's wearing like greens and blues and grays. Do you know what I mean? Like for uniforms, and so like the 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 actual tiger stripe camouflage that some of the like the German SS and that kind of stuff they have like their special forces guys right you see that this man sort of materializes from sort of nowhere you know what I mean you know and you can very clearly tell you've heard stories of of the SS and what they are and what they do and how they're the Germans sort of like special soldiers and stormtroopers and all this disaster that the that the that and and hell and death that the german uh war machine brings right and they have this certain mystique to them almost until you guys began to push them back at treadmore Yaka, right and you see that he has just used things in a way to approach this thing to where um he was basically a ghost until he's right there and you see him quietly reach around and slip out this thing this little tube, he puts it inside his jacket, and then you see that he begins to look like he wants to fade back out of town, like he's gonna you know, like physically walk out of town. Did she tell me what to do with my ticket? Not really. She told you to sit on the drop and watch for what happened, and if nobody came to take it... You're at the edge of town. I'm gonna do my best to follow him. Do so, tailing an SS operative, do you feel like this is a pushing your luck, or do you feel like this is still a Soviet air woman? I'm kind of in... Like, I'm kind of invincible. <laughs> okay. I'm Vera. Right. Just Vera. True. Um, so, Vera <laughs> thinks this is... I feel like a natural-born Soviet era. And this is what my country has called me to do. It's not another question that I can do it. <laughs> All right. Oh. Fair enough. <laughs> um, there's no question. No doubt in my mind. Yep. Nope. I'm, I'm just as capable as an SS officer. Okay. Very good. Let's see it, Vera. <laughs> Eight. If I take, yeah, eight. Eight. All right. So on eight, choose one. Would you guys be mad if I took two? That might be the scariest dice roll ever. I was like, you're going to four. Okay, I'm going to take two. 
So and I'm actually, good. I'm going to make someone do what I want. So I'm going to make him lead me to, without me getting caught, and make he's him... going to lead me to wherever he's taking this information. I'm going to hear what they're going to do with the information. I want to know. Yeah. Mm, okay. But there's not going to be consequences, because that's... <laughs> what was my first pick? <laughs> no consequences. <laughs> okay. I would like to reiterate. <laughs> Did I mention that there's no consequences? <laughs> Very good. So I think that you follow him out of town, and as you're reaching sort of like the boundary of town, right, and you see... <laughs> Um, he walks out of town and then he gets down and he like low crawls and like it is agonizing. It takes, you know, you see this guy, this is, must be what he does or he's trained for a long time to do that. That he low crawls across a plane, unbelievably slow to not be detected. And then do that. into a forest line. Yeah, I can and, do that too. Yeah, you know. Apparently. <laughs> and and uh, when you get to the forest line, you're I there. Have a kid. Now you heard the gunshots that happened uh, with with Galia mm-hmm. shooting, right? And then you will hear one one lone shot that sounds out in the night. Pop. And then you know he stops for a minute, and then he begins crawling again. And he will crawl through the forest eventually. Then once he gets to the forest, he's out of the flatter lands area. He stands up and he kind of quietly moves through the forest. And he comes to a well, actually, in the middle of the woods. And uh, when he gets there, you see that there will be sort of like um, around this well, there's about a dozen men that are all dressed in the same way that all appear to be oh, um, SS that officers. A Oh, this is a the other well was oh, in the guys. opposite direction of the airbase. Oh, right. mm-hmm. okay. It was in like the south, southwest. Corner. I'm gonna listen. Um, so they're speaking in German, very clearly. But luckily, you speak German because you're a spy. <laughs> and uh, he says, "I got the drop. I heard a shot." You know, they're like, "Oh yeah, we heard the shot. Yeah, no one's back yet." You know, they're like, "Klaus isn't back yet. Uh, we're waiting on him. Whatever." Klaus is that the name of the mechanic? No. No, it's a German name. You know, okay. you, you know, you know that's a German name. Do you know okay. what I'm saying? So the mechanic with the Olympus Anatoly. Okay. Mm. See, so, you know, if there's another drop, it might be fair to presume that that's probably the other guy that wants to go to the other drop or whatever. But my guy did the long shot. No. Oksana did the shot. So oh, she's okay. So you've been around other soldiers before, but these, like, you haven't been around like elite Russian infantry before and these guys carry them like they're very clearly infantry but they carry themselves differently there's a different level of discipline and and the way these guys conduct themselves you know what I'm saying? <coughs> so you're you're it's fair to say that these guys are not run-of-the-mill german soldiers or whatever and you know you hear them talk about how they're you know they'll get this to the the luftwaffe commanders and uh you know maneuver some infantry positions around to avoid avoid bombings or whatever and uh, at this point, you see someone gets out of radio or whatever and is and is delivering signals by radio or whatever. I'm going to make sure that I get down the exact orders that they're delivering so that we can be prepared for Luftwaffe at all of them. Okay. I think, yeah, I think that's probably where they, you know, they wait for a while. And there will be eventually another soldier that's similarly dressed arrives. No! And uh, you see that he actually is uh, walking with a, a bit of a limp. And uh, the, the German soldiers are there like, uh, what happened? And he, was, he said something about, you know, some filthy Russian bitch shot me, basically. He's like, it's okay. Uh, and he pats his, you know, like a German knife that he has on his chest. <gasps> and he's like, I buried this deep in that, in, in her oh. chest. Oh, Wait, maybe maybe we'll get lucky and I'll be sped up. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. Can we spend our two missions? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he gives his information to the radio guy, and they make some more signals. Is it the same? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, actually, they don't. I'm sorry, they don't make another set of signals. They confirm the information or whatever. It's like they they, you know, do two, two different drops to make sure the information gets out, and then they sort of gather up their stuff, they pack up the radio, and they, you know, head off in a, uh, away from everything to go hide back somewhere else. I know. I'm going to bolt towards Ox- the sound where I got that gunfire. Okay. Bolt. I mean, as soon as they head the opposite <laughs> way, bolting, I have to save her. 
Okay. So you will run and you run till your chest heaves and your sides I'll, ache. I'll, I'll vomit and keep and running. And you keep running and keep running and keep running. And you eventually get back to the town. And, well, I'll say you have an idea of where the sh- you heard the shot come from, right? And I think it only seems dramatic that you arrive and you see that... Did Sveta go with Oksana? No, she mm-hmm. went to gather other stuff. Oh, okay. So Allegedly. you're you're coming into town and you see, well, you're you're hauling ass across this open place that you you crawled across the whole way, right? And you see, oh, hang on, let me think. I don't want to set this up. It was after the crawling that I heard the gunfire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it shouldn't be in the field. No, no, no. no. I was saying like I was thinking as you're poaching across the field. So I think okay, so. You arrive in a town, and you have an idea of where this shot came from, right? And you're running that way, and you pass the the road that goes out of town, right? And you see that there are the front, like, porches along the main street, right? You see that there are... Normally, this area is pretty quiet or whatever, and you see that there are probably a dozen or so men that are on the porches there that look like... They're there waiting for something. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, like, because Sveta said she was going to come out here. Like, she was going to arrange for other people or whatever. And they, like, sort of take note of you, you know, running across the way. And they're like, what the hell? <laughs> you know? And um, you will go a couple blocks down from there. And you will hear uh, someone crying, actually. I'm going to whip off my coat and be ready to, like, turn mm-hmm. a kit. Like, <sighs> Okay, so you, you run and you find... You see that uh, Oksana is laying on the ground, and she's, like, on her back, and you see that she's, like, you know, right in the sort of, like, above her, like, between her collarbone and, like, your nipple line. She's got, uh, there's just a, she's bleeding, you know, to beat hell coming out of there, like, you know, like, right, right here, like this, you know what I'm saying? And see, she's having a hard, she's, like, gasping for breath, and she's having a hard time. She's really working as you arrive. Do they cover this in first aid? Like, how do I get her lungs to quit filling up with blood? So you, you have some basic combat life-saving stuff, so you have some very basic understanding of those kind of things. So you can sort of, like, you know, try and treat her and do this kind of stuff. You know, you have some, you know, some rudimentary skills. You know what I mean? Like, don't send you out there completely unprepared. <laughs> you know? Okay, I'm going to make sure she survives. All right, so you do the best you can. You're, you know, holding pressure on there and talking to her. So you're laying there, or like she's laying there and you're beside her and you're applying, you know, your best first aid that you've, you've been trained to. And... I'm going to talk to her about her singing today and how beautiful it was. Right. And how she should be singing at a, at a nightclub in Moscow. <laughs> All right, so I feel like this should be a tempt your fate moment, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so go ahead and roll plus guts. Thanks for listening. This has been an episode of Just One More Fix. Music has been provided by Kevin McLeod. You can find him at incompetech.com. You can support us at patreon.com slash justonemorefix or follow us on Twitter at justonemorefix. Thanks.